here at Fall Market, well, pre-Fall Market, with my buddy, Jenny Byer. This is what it's like inside the day before the ta-da. It's a miracle what they can pull off, I right? I know. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Can't get down the aisles for tripping and everything, and then tomorrow it's perfect. Carpets and wonderful. Disneyland. Well, speaking of Disneyland, Ginny is here with her new line of batiks with RJR. Tell us about that. Well, I started working on it about a year and a half ago, and it was really frustrating at first because I wasn't working firsthand with the people actually doing the production, and I kept saying, you gotta send me to Indonesia, you gotta send them. I was just there last month. And really? I was able to visit the facility that creates the batiks and the designers that I've been kind of working with remotely, and, and as much as I thought I knew about the production of batiks, it was, a lot of surprises for me as well. Well, I know last last spring market you said, this is hard. Well, it's hard working without knowing the full extent of the process that happens. And, and, and we finally got there with this first line that I'm thrilled with, but I think the next line is going to be even that much better because of the knowledge I've learned from having them in there. Well, that's the truth, yeah, right? Right. Well, what's really cool is Ginny is going to walk us through the process of how the batiks that we love are made, and it is not simple. <laughs> no, no, it's not. I mean, I'm, I, I came away from there thinking when all was said and done, how can we possibly pay only this much what we pay for these batiks because every single step of the way except the washing machine stage is done. Wow. Okay, wow. so here you have some of your older prints. I recognize these, right? Yes. Well, I, I went through, for the first line of batiks, I went through fabrics I had previously done to see is there a design that I felt would lend itself well to a batik design. And here's a couple of them. This was a really, really old one. I with recognize VIP it, yes. Years and years ago. <laughs> And of course we could never do anything that intricate, but I like the overall flow of the design. And so what I did is work with these, simplify them down into a pattern that actually, here Look you see the, the paisley. These up. Look at this, you guys. There's the Isn't paisley. it wonderful? And you don't even recognize them as being the same pattern. Right. But the thing about batik is you can't have any more than about a 10 inch repeat of the design because the what they call is a chop, the stamp, they mm -hmm. use to stamp the design. Yeah, let me show everybody this. Th this is well, really, truly one of, one of your chops, right? Well, this one is a prototype done in aluminum. The actual oh, okay. chops are done in copper, but they do a prototype first in aluminum because the copper is so expensive, just to make sure the design is working. Here you can see the one, now this isn't one of my designs, but it's a chop done, and it, you can see how much heavier it is. Even oh, this is the real smaller. chamele. This is the real thing, and they do this grid on the back, and they wow. embed the copper into it. So that's the design, and that's why it can't be more than 8 to 10 inches. And there you have it. And the design is such that when they chop it, it just fits right here. How about for you? Yeah, big order? Very, very big sort. It's a very big order. Okay, so now what I'm really surprised about is the cotton because we know it's different, right? No, 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 it's not different. This is exactly the same cotton that we use for any of the You're fabrics me. that you find in clothing. No, exactly the same. Feel the hand of it. I mean, it's just the nice, soft... But it feels so different on the bolt. And stitches differently, too. Well, the reason for that is the... Part of the process of doing the batiks is the wax that they put on to get the resist for the design. Okay. And then they, when they remove that wax, they're boiled in these vats of water and everything, and uh, it, it melts the wax, it goes to the top, and they never ever quite get all that wax residual off the fabric, which is why it feels tighter by sometimes, and some fabrics, in fact, I was thrilled with the way, this is one of my prints, and you feel it, and I was just thrilled with how soft it was. and it depends on how well the facility who's doing wow. it, duh, how good a job they do getting the wax off. Now, is it like beeswax as we know it? Well, no, actually, they use a wax from a certain tree over there. Really? Yeah, yeah. And uh, You got yourself an education, I didn't did. you? I got a real education. <laughs> so tell us about this piece here. Okay, so this is kind of interesting to see the process. First, you start off with a raw cloth. Mm -hmm. 
And what we're after, this is a finished piece, but I'm going to show you the others. This is the finished piece, but the first step is to get the line work. Okay. So you, and you see in this piece, you've got some parts of the line are more orange, some are uh, darker, some are lighter, but it's just the line work that shows the pattern of the design. So they dye the fabric. And this. this is the first dyeing of the wow. fabric. And the purpose of this dye is strictly, strictly to get the line work. Okay. What they do is they, they lay out, they only work in 15 yard or 15 meter pieces at a time. And they lay it out on the ground, mm -hmm. on, on mats. And they do this little scrunching technique where they scrunch it all up. And then they have different techniques by which they will dye it. One of them is... For every color you have in here, there'll be a different guy with a little pot of dye and a sponge, and he goes along and sponges did it. Did you on. do it? I did. I did all of this. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it was really fun. Awesome. And then some of the guys, um, one of the techniques, they'll go with a sponge. Some of them might squirt water on Are there. Are there any women doing this, or is it all men? Different techniques the women do, but not this part. I okay. didn't see any. I saw a woman in the dye house do the dyeing, but I didn't see her doing any of this. But okay. you know, it's hard. You're, so what happens is, after they do this and dye it, then oh, they... Oh, ooh, ooh, the wax is on it. The wax is on it. And wow. And they painstakingly, they melt this wax with a stove that's sitting beside them. They take the chop. Where did I put my chop? Here. Um... They actually take the chop, dip it in the wax, stamp the fabric. Dip it in the wax, stamp the fabric. And it, it takes, you know, one guy working really hard all day long might, if he's lucky, be able to stamp 50 or 60 yards in a day. So you see how time consuming it is. Wow. So after that process. Look at this. Well, now, now they've bleached it because they don't want that dark color anymore except underneath the wax. So they bleach it and they put it in these big bats where they bleach the cloth. Mm -hmm. And after they bleach it, then they dye it again. So is that here then? And that's there. The wax is still on there, but they dye it now the color that you want for the background. Color. It's like silk screening, really, well, in a sense. In, isn't in a it? way, yeah. yeah. But every single one of these processes is completely done by hand. And then, then they put this in those big bats and boiling water and melt the wax off, and you get your final. Do so then piece. does the wax kind of rise and then they recycle? Yeah, I, actually, exactly that's what they do. The wax floats to the top and they wow. get these big skimmers and skim it off and put it to get hard again and then they melt it all I, over and reuse it. I had no idea. Now, I asked Ginny before we started doing this, is the fabric available or what's the deal? Because the colors are just, how many colors? Uh, we've got 46 different colors. And they, they all shade together. We tried to work with shading. We've got a lot of samples that we've done and patterns that mm -hmm. are available. But, um, but what people have to realize, it's not like when we do the regular screen prints or fabrics that uh -huh. you've done that I've done before, where the, everything is mechanized and they're putting out thousands of yards at a time and they can print 3,000 yards, which might be the initial order, in no time at all. Well, with the batiks, these are just small little operations where one guy is painstakingly stamping the fabric and then you've got other issues just being the country that it is so the first three shipments of the batiks were sent but the first one was almost a month late now why was it a month late well because the truck broke down on the way oh to the dock and they missed the boat so the next boat that was available didn't go from Sing didn't go to Singapore and out. It went to Korea and out, and then Korea was that much farther and away. The, and then here we are with our iPhones. I was say, I where, mean, is it, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? You know, where is the fabric? Why is it late? You know. But, so then the second shipment came, and they inspect all the ships that come. Okay, so I want to hold this up. Yeah. Look at this, you guys. I mean, isn't it beautiful? Look at this purse. Now you have a bunch of free patterns on the RJR there's, site. There's, there's two free patterns to download and also other patterns that are available through Ginny Buyer Studio. The purse is one of them, the table runner is one. Aren't they great projects? Yeah. Have a good day. That's a nice. Thanks, bye. <laughs>